Good morning. Good morning. Today we celebrate the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We welcome all. The Angel Warren Choir concert is next Sunday at 3 p.m. in church. Refreshments to follow. All are welcome. Trunk or Treat is next Sunday evening in the parking lot. Hope to see you there. All basketball registrations are due by Friday, October 27th. A special remembrance is made in this Mass for Rose Hernandez and the people of the parish. Please stand. Our opening hymn is number 589. O oh God, beyond all praising, number 589.
and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. This time I'd like to call forward all of our young children to come and meet their catechist for the children's liturgy of the world.
to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Today the church celebrates World Mission Sunday. And the World Mission Sunday we celebrate the work of the church throughout the world because the mission of the church is to go out to all the world and to preach the good news by our words and by our actions. So another way of saying that, the mission of the church is to be Christ to others. But when you think about it, Christ really was the first missionary. He was sent by the Father in heaven to a foreign land, not only to bring the good news, but to be the good news of salvation. And through his great commission, he has entrusted to all the baptized, and that means to me and to you, to continue his work here on earth. And many people come to mind when you think of the great missionaries of our faith. St. Paul was a persecutor of the early Christians, and he became an apostle of Jesus Christ. In his own words, he said, I was apprehended by Christ, and was considered and constrained to turn right around to become that champion of the cause that, at the moment, I have endeavored to exterminate. He became dedicated to the building up of the church, that which he was doing his best until that point to demolish. And Paul's life 
and ministry efforts are detailed in a book in the, in the Bible, and that's called the Acts of the Apostles. On his three missionary journeys, which occurred between 47 and 53 AD, he established churches in Galatia, in Corinth, in Ephesus, in Thessalonica, until he was arrested and sent to Rome and beheaded. In his letter to the Thessalonians, we are reminded what we should do and what we should not do. We should not wrong others, most importantly, the most vulnerable. But we are to be compassionate as the Lord is compassionate. We should be the model for our world today as the Thessalonians were the model for the earth. St. Francis Xavier lived in the 16th century. He was one of the first seven priests that, that was ordained for a new uh, religious order called the Society of Jesus, which we know today as the Jesuits. His first missionary journey took him to the East Indies. Then he was sent to the Orient, to Sri Lanka, to New Guinea, to the Philippines, to Japan and then to India. And it was his dream of evangelizing China, but he died before that goal was achieved. He was working with inadequate funds. He had little cooperation, and he was often openly opposed. But he lived as the natives did, and he won them to Christianity because of the fervor of his preaching and the example of his life and the genuine concern for every one of them. A more modern day saint that we consider a real missionary is Saint Catherine Drexel. She was born in 1858 to a prominent Philadelphia family. She became imbued from an early age with the love of God and the love for her neighbor, and she took an avid interest for the material and the spiritual well-being of the black and the Native American peoples. She first began by donating money, but she concluded that more was needed, and that lacking ingredient that was needed was people. Catherine then founded the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament, for the Indian and colored people, whose members worked for the betterment of those they were called to serve. From the age of 33 until her death in 1955, at the age of 96, she dedicated her life, and she dedicated every penny of the fortune that she had inherited, about $20 million worth, to this work. In 1894, Mother Drexel took part in opening the first mission school for the Indians in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And other schools quickly followed for the Native Americans west of the Mississippi and for the blacks in the southern part of the United States. And in 1915, she also founded Xavier University in New Orleans. After death, there were more than 500 sisters, and they were teaching in 63 schools throughout our country. Paul, Francis Savior, Catherine Drexel did all extraordinary missionary work and brought the gospel and the love of God to many. We are all called to do the same. Now let me tell you another story. It's a story about a little girl who is in great distress because she could not feel the love of God in her life. She said, why doesn't God let me feel his presence? If only I could feel him and know that he had touched me. Her elderly grandmother, to whom she was complaining to at the time, said to her, if you pray to God right now, I bet you'll be able to feel him. Close your eyes and pray to him. Ask him to put out his hand 
and to touch you. Well, that girl closed her eyes and she began praying fervently. And then, for just a brief moment, she felt a hand on her hand. And she cried out, he touched me. And then she said, you know what? His hand felt a lot like your hand. And then her grandmother said to her, of course it was my hand, because that's how God works. He takes the hand that is nearest to him, and he uses that. All the law and the prophets are summed up, as we know, by loving God and loving our neighbor. This is not something that is above and beyond our daily lives. This is the fabric of our lives. This is what makes us who we are. Loving God and loving our neighbor is at the heart of our daily lives. It is the springboard of all of our actions. It is the reason for our prayer life. It is the motivation for our lifestyle. And it is the very reason we are here today. We are all called to spread the good news and to be Christ for others. We are all called as our vocation in life to be saints by this witness. St. Teresa of Avila put it together so beautifully in a prayer that she wrote, which I have used many, many times before. And it goes like this. Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes for which he looks compassionately out onto the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. And yours are the hands with which he blesses all of the world. I believe in one my God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, of all, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, God, the Son of God, born of the Father, Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God, God from true God, begotten of God, made, consecration of the Father, through him all things were made, for us, for us men for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the daughter glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess with baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this World Mission Sunday, we embrace the call to have our hearts on fire and our feet on the moon. We come before the Lord asking Him to fuel our passion and direct our steps as we bear witness to His love throughout the world. For Pope Francis, our leading missionary, and for all those who bravely proclaim the gospel in foreign lands, may their hearts remain a place with love for Christ and all of humanity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public office, 
May the Lord grant them humility and courage in working for the good of their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, our God. For mission territories, rich in faith, but in need of resources, may our collective efforts bring relief and spiritual nourishment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, our prayer. For these of our church, that they may be filled with missionary zeal, harnessing the power of digital evangelization, to spread the message of Christ far and wide, and inspiring their peers to a life rooted in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all us gathered here, may the Lord sanctify us in lives of fidelity to Him and love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Tom Victor, may they soon be welcomed into the kingdom of God through the mercy of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, unite our hearts with the fire of your love. As we strive to answer our call to mission, guide our steps and empower us to be true witnesses of your love in every corner of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Bring our brothers and sisters the most sacrificing yours. May they be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord says, I your hands. We praise the glory of His name for our good and good. Grant us, O Lord, we pray a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying actions of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks to our Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things with sin, so that you might love in us with the love of your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, but by sinning we have lost in disobedience. So, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as an exaltation we have heard. In a similar way, when so presented, he took the chalice, and giving him thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Blessed Joseph, your spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Elizabeth of Hungary, and with all the saints of this constant intercession, in your presence we rely for the unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, of your servant, Francis our Pope, Alfred our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you summon before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at the passing from this life, give kind of witness to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow the Lord, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit.
those who are unable to do this today are unable to receive the Eucharist at this time. I'll not pray a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament, and I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 